World Heritage is an asset to all. Its preservation demands commitment from each and every one of us. This day is declared as World Heritage Day to remind us that we own a diverse cultural heritage and that is also vulnerable and demands constant effort from our part to protect and conserve it. Amrita Darsanam and I, Amrita Buri, invite you all to reminisce, to understand and to live on without forgetting the heritage that we own. Prayer, in a way, is an invocation of the waves of knowledge that are activated on the stage. It also means keeping the waves of knowledge generated on the stage constantly active through enchantment. We invite Sri Vivek Subramanyam to enlighten us with a prayer to the Almighty. Dhyayamu Dhavalavandhanavadi Tiju Mai Naishti Sniktam Panga Vilohini Bhavati Mandasmita Sri Mukhi Vatsalyam Ritavarshini Sumaduram Sangeetara Lapini Shamadi Madhusikta Suktim Amritananda Atmigamishwari Amritananda Amrita Darshanam and I, Amrita Vuri, invites Dr. Anandas, Head of Department Amrita Darshanam, International Center for Spiritual Studies, to offer the welcome address. Om Amrita Shreenama. Good morning, everyone. A respected chief guest of the day, Sri K. K. Mohammed, sir. Our guest from Ashram, Veda Amrita Chaitanyaji, Hariji. Respected students, my dear colleagues. We are immensely happy to celebrate this World Heritage Day in association with the most wonderful, talented youngsters of our, of our Amritavidi campus, the Amrita Ayut team, Amrita Yuvadharma Thara. In fact, this should have been celebrated on the 18th, that is three days back. But due to the exam schedules, we have to celebrate it. It was postponed to today to be celebrated, the World Heritage Day. I would like to travel, time travel, for a few years. It was on 18th April 1982, on the occasion of a symposium organized by ICOMOS, International Council for Monuments and Sites, which was held in Tunisia, the holding of the International Day for Monuments and Sites to be celebrated simultaneously throughout the world was suggested. The idea was also approved by UNESCO General Conference who passed a resolution in November 1983 recommending that member states examine the possibility of declaring 18th of April each year as International Monuments and Sites Day. This has been traditionally called the World Heritage Day. This special day offers an opportunity to raise the public's awareness about the diversity of cultural heritage and the efforts that are required to protect and conserve it, as well as draw attention to its vulnerability. In connection to this, UNESCO has enlisted World Heritage Sites, which are landmarks officially recognized by UNESCO. Until July 2016, 1,052 sites have been listed 
as World Heritage Sites. It is quite heartbreaking to see that many of these sites are facing destruction due to both climatic and human-made calamities. According to UNESCO, there are 55 important sites which face destruction. Probably we are all familiar with the news about Taliban militants destroying the Buddha statues of Bamiyan Valley in Afghanistan, and that was in 2001. Islamic State militants destroying the ancient city of Palmyra, that is in Syria, in the year 2013. The destruction of the Great Barrier Reefs of Australia is another major occurrence due to climatic change. At this juncture, we meet personalities like our KK Mohammed and Michelle Ranino, who recently received Padma Shri. They have spent more than two decades fighting like army men to conserve and protect many of such sites in India and to, and to inspire others to join hands with them. Speaking about our chief guest today, KK Mohammed sir, he was born in Calicut. He obtained his master's degree in history from Aligarh Muslim University and postgraduate diploma in archaeology from the School of Archaeology, Archaeological Survey of India, New Delhi. He later served as deputy superintendent and archaeologist in Archaeological Survey of India. His major archaeological discoveries include many Buddhist excavations and excavation of rocket caves. His life story became a suspense thriller. He would himself narrate that. During the restoration of Bhateshwar Temple complex situated 40 kilometers away from Gwalior. This includes 200 ancient Shiva and Vishnu temples. He had to face many dacoits and encroached mining mafia during the process as well. He has won many international and national awards. His autobiography titled Jnan and the Bharatiyan discusses many issues which are relevant even today. On behalf of whole Amritapuri campus, I would like to welcome KK Mohammed sir. I would also like to welcome Swami Dhyan Amrita Chaitanya Ji, Swami Veda Amrita Chaitanya Ji, who arrived here from our ashram to be in this celebration. I would also like to welcome all our ashram inmates who have arrived here. And I would like to welcome all my colleagues, teaching as well as non-teaching, and all my student friends to this celebration of World Culture Heritage Day. Om Amrita Shriya Namah. Thank you, sir. We request our honored chief guest, Mr. K.K. Mohammed, sir, to fulfill the purpose of this occasion and grace us with his words. Sir, please. Indeed, a pleasant personal pleasure and privilege for me to be here amidst you on the occasion of the celebration of the World Heritage Day. As you all know, World Heritage Day is celebrated on 18th of April. It is celebrated all over the world. And I think you would be the first institution in Kerala who are celebrating this one. And you have got one more distinction that you have been recognized by UGC as the university which stands first in order of merit among the private universities. I am happy that I am addressing a group of that kind of youngsters who are active, alert, vigorous, courageous, generous, industrious and you have got all the qualities. And in a befitting manner for the World Heritage Day, we all talk about this world heritage. What is this world heritage and how are we going to celebrate and how are we going to conserve and preserve our monument for the future generation. We have almost a number of world heritage monuments in the country. Taj Mahal, Agra Fort, Fatehpur Sikri, Ajanda, Ellora, Mahabalipuram and a number of monuments. But what is the condition of the preservation? 
what is the condition of the monuments that are not i mean that are not come in the list of world heritage monuments all these things of all these kinds of aspects you know we'll have to discuss sometimes and i'm today i'm going to take you to a site which is known as bateshwar bateshwar is 50 kilometers away from golior normally if there is a world heritage monument or if there is a group of heritage monuments there it is easy to operate there is it is easy to work it is easy to do do the conservation work but here in this site it was very difficult difficult in the sense that it was infested with dreaded decoits of the chambal valley most of you might be knowing what is chambal valley there we have got a group of decoits not one group one two three groups many groups their mother tongue is gun centered decoity in kerala we don't have this kinds of decoits we might be having thieves that's all but not decoits so number one i mean going to these places and convincing them that these are the monuments and that should be conserved and the second thing is getting their this one support help and support so for that i mean we had to take near about 4 months and after that they were able to they were i mean they were ready to support us and then how we have taken up the conservation work of this monument that is what i am going to speak Next, uh, this is an North Indian group of temples. Here you can see the lower portion that is known as Vedi Bandha, the middle portion that is Janga, then you have the base portion that is Varanthika, then Shikara, and then on top you have the Amalka. This is a typical North Indian temple of the early period. Next. is uh, uh, it's a operating so this is chambal valley all these seven dunes that has got its own pathways also these pathways are known to only the dacoits i mean it's not known to the police even if the police comes to catch the this people they would be escaping and the police would be in turn they would be caught by these people so this is that kind of area i think they will have to operate from there next so one dacoit was mansing he is credited with 1112 robberies he killed 185 persons including 32 police people so you can just think of these people how they would be working and how to have a dialogue with those people next second is malkan si another decoy who was operating in the same chambal valley area he had only 100 cases against him but in 1972 he surrendered to the police he became the mla of one party when that once that i mean I mean this party lost he changed his loyalty to the other party next then madosi similarly he also surrendered became the mla then when the party changed i mean he also changed next even during the day time also you can see people working here i mean these are not the police people these are the dacoits and there were several groups when i when i went to the site there was one nirbhay gujjar group there was ram babu gadriya group 
there was one more Tokyo group. So three groups were operating. So this is even during the day, day time they are operating. And sometimes, you know, there will be group fights also among them. Next. This is a group fight. And a man from the other group, he has al already fallen down. Next. So, after taking permission from all these things, that I mean, we said that, I mean, you cannot approach them directly. You have to go through them, to them, through the intermediaries. Otherwise, you know, they would kidnap you or they would kill you. So, we approached them through the intermediaries. So, the first question was, why do you want to conserve this temple that is in the forest? We told them that it is a world, I mean, these are the heritage monuments under the government of India, so it has to be conserved. Now the second question is, this man who has, I mean, who is heading the team, he is a Muslim. So why a Muslim is interested in conserving these temples? And his name is Muhammad. So when we talk about Muhammad Ghazni, uh, we talk about Muhammad, we know about Muhammad Ghazni and Muhammad Ghori who had destroyed our temples. So all these names, you know, all these things comes up. Finally, they were told, no, he has got a record of conserving temples. It is his duty. So finally, they relented and they said, okay, you can have the conservation of this one. I mean, we'll give you only four months. Within that, I mean, you have to do the carry out the work. So we said, okay, that's fine. And then when I went to the site, I saw it like this one. As if in a huge earthquake, a very big earthquake, the whole temple town had come tumbling down like a pack of cards. You can just see. It was not a wanton destruction. It was an earthquake. So only two temples are standing here. That was one frame. Next. You can just see another frame. Only one, two, three, four, five temples that are standing. All others are completely crumbled down. Next. A third frame, again you have only one, two, three temples standing. Next. Next. These are all different shots of different, because it was an area of almost two kilometers. Next. Next. This, any moment, it may fall down. Because the, the exterior portion has already fallen down and the inner portion can it can fall down any moment. In Hindi there is a verse, Itna tootahu me chune se bikar jayenge. I am so broken that by the mere touch of your hand, I mean, the entire thing may crumble down. Yes, please. Next. This, how this might have fallen down? Can you just animate it? Please press. So finally we saw it like this one. Next. And now from here onwards we are going to start the work. So whenever you take up the conservation work, you have to start it right from the entrance area. So what is the entrance area? So we started from here. This is a pillar base and the pillar was least standing here and the stone on the top of this one it is lying here and on top of which I mean it is lying here. So I mean nobody had the courage to lift anything from here because it was an area infested with dracoid. So nobody had the courage to lift anything from here. So you cannot have an entrance by simply having one pillar base. So, normally if you are not finding an answer, people, we look at God, but an archaeologist, he looks down. So, what we did is, we excavated this portion. Next. So, we got this pillar base also. Okay, a pillar base is there, but where is the pillar? Next. So, we got the pillar also here. This area is paved and this area is also Next. And so we put up this one by inserting here. I mean, we had that uh, uh, iron rods, that is steel rods, and also aldehyde. 
so this was i mean the whole thing was put up and here also there is a cleavage it was put up like this next now this is also the work has been completed now all this four temple one two three four all these temples this was documented first and then it was brought down strong foundation was given and then it was re erected as it was and also we paved this way also just see what is going to have what what kind of transformation it is going to have next just see. when the dacoits saw this one they were very highly impressed because you know, they had i mean during our arrangement was like this one whenever we took up this kind of conservation work they would be they would not stay here they would be going for their dacoity to some other place and when they came back this was how they had seen it so it is it had a highly impressed them so what they used to do is whenever i mean a group moves there would be a pilot group a group of them I and mean, some uh, other important inform informers they would be traveling ahead so they saw it when they saw it I mean, they reported to their uh, this one uh, sardar sardar in logon ne kamal ke kaam kiya which means they have done miraculous work so sardar that is nirbhay gujja he came he saw he tried i mean he was very much impressed he tried to smile but he could not smile because you know, he has killed a number of persons so he could only chuckle he could not smile so finally he said ye to kamal ke kaam hai this is a kind of miraculous work so that was a certificate for us next so this is our travel circle because you had seen it like this one and now this is like this next one. again now most of these temples were shiva temples there were one or two vishnu temples also so shiva would be having jada makuta and he would be having charma vastra also jadi charmi shikandi cha sarvanga sarva bhavana harischa harnacha cha sarva bhuda har prabhu it is ultimately he who destroys everything shashadam shiva machudam if there is anything permanent that is only shiva so here we have got another temple so here if you look at it this may look very innocuous but this was on the top of this temple it is known as amalka next and we had the problem whether it is a shiva temple or vishnu vishnu temple so normally i mean we look at the pradishta what is the pradishta but there was no pradishta here then we look at this lalada bimma here it is ganapati ganapati most probably i mean he would be of course son of shiva but you know ganapati sometimes you know even in the vishnu temple also because he is one who is removing all kinds of obstacles so that we are sometimes you know he would be there even in vishnu temples also but then how to see it how to ascertain it we normally archaeologists we look at this thing this is not square this is a rectangular if it is rectangular yes that is nandistha vahanam vrishabho yasya vasudhi kanta bhushanam vame shakti dharam deva vakaraya namo nama vahanam vrishabho yasya his vahana is vrishabh nandi so we i just recited this mantra and took a round of this place and i could get a small beautiful cute nandi sitting as if he is looking for me next we conserved this temple next this portion was also conserved you might be asking where is nandi next just see a small very beautiful very cute nandi and he is looking towards him and whenever wherever there is nandi he would be very attentive his eyes would be very riveted and his ears also it would be very attentive what is he doing he is looking towards both shiva and parvati and he is listening that omkara which is coming from kailash what is omkara om tat brahma om tat ayu om tat atma om tat satyam om tat sarva everything is om so he is looking towards that one that is why if you go to banaras or sometimes 
parts of Tamil Nadu also. You can see, I mean, nobody goes to a temple, I mean, Shiva temple, without taking a round of Pradishtha, without taking Pradishtha of Nandi. People say, because you know that, I mean, it is he only who can listen to that Omkara which is coming from there, that goes through, through, through his, this one mouth, and it comes through his ears, and if you are taking a Pradishtha of this one, you can have a part of it, you can have a glimpse of it, and you can, in, you can inhale it. That is why most of the Tamil Nadu ladies also and also in Banaras I have seen. People they will be taking a Pradishtana of Nandi first, then only they would go to Shiva. Next. Next. You see, you had seen it like this one, now it is like this. So it became, you know, because you know they became our our men, they started changing, this tacoid started changing. Next. Next. This because it's a cute long. Uh, this one. So, I'll be, I mean, just, I mean, cutting down certain things. Next. 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 So, these three temples we saw like this one. This has already, I mean, this has already fallen down. But the parts are there itself. Next. The Shigara is here. This, I mean, the, the, this one, you, here you have the Sri Kovil. And then just outside, you have the Andarala. So that has this Andarala has fallen down. This is of course the Garbhagraha and the Andarala has fallen down. And here it may moment it may fall down any moment. Next. So we brought down it, gave a very strong foundation, and now we are re-erecting the, the Shigra portion. Next. 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 Here you can see the Shigara is being conserved and this Shigara, I mean after completing this one, we will take up this, this Shigara. Next. Almost completed. Next. Now this is also completed. All the three temples. Next. Next. So you had seen it like this one and now this is like this. Next. And this, it looks like the setting of an English horror story. This, it is also again, this, uh, of course, this Garbhagraha is there, but Andarala, it is very precariously standing on one leg. And this Andarala has already fallen down. And of course, this is, I mean, this foundation is sagging. So we brought them down, strong foundation was given, and so that, you know, for the next 2000 years, nothing should happen to this monument. Next. Next. Just see. A very beautiful, very cute, very beautiful monument. Next. Next. This is a classical case. This tree, it has completely eaten away this monument, this temple. So as per our Agamas, you just cannot, I mean, if you want to save this temple, you have to cut down the tree. But as per Agamas, you cannot just cut down the tree like that. You have to take the permission of the temple, number one. You have to take the permission of the birds that would be sitting over this one. You have to take the permission of the insect that has got a home on this one. So we took the permission of all of them. And when we tried to cut down it, the entire thing fell down. And then we had to re-erect it again. Next. We, had, we started our re-erections. Next. It has come up to this stage. Next. Now it has come up to this stage. Next. Next. And now we have to add only one more this line. Next. Just see, it's completed. Very fresh, unspoiled by time. It's now stand like a beautiful temple. Completely fresh now. Again, now I mean for the two, because you know we have got such a, I mean, this one, I mean, such a strong foundation that I mean for the next 2000 years you don't have to worry about this one. Next. 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 Now there is another classical case. It is pressing down. The tree is pressing down. And the roots of the tree has gone through the drips of the tree. What does an archaeologist do? He is not only a conservator, he is an excavator also. Because you know, if you walk over this one, he would be, if he is an experienced person, 
he would be knowing what is beneath his feet. That is the real work of an archaeologist. Because you know about Harappa and Mohanjadara and all those things. Some hundred years back, we did not know that we had a history which goes back to 2500 BC, that is Harappa and Mohanjadara. We knew that our history goes back only to the period of Buddha, that is 600 BC. Then it was with the help of archaeologists, Harappa and Mohanjadaro was discovered. We thought that Buddha, he is an Ethiopian or an Egyptian. But it was because of the work of the archaeologists working in Sri Lanka, they came to know he was, it was not done in that way, he was an Indian. Similarly about Ashoka also, people thought that he is a Sri Lankan, not an Indian. Again, it was with the help of the archaeologists we came to know, no, he was an Indian. So similarly, when I walked over, here there was a tree and I was just walking over this one. I could sense that there were few temples. How many, I was not able to correctly say, but I knew that I am going to get two, three temples. And just see what we are going to get next. This is the debris. We had to cut down this tree. Next. Next. See. One, two, three. And there is one more one coming here. I mean the entire thing was complete, completely under the debris. Next. And then when we conserved it, because this is this one. And from here we have got one, two, three, four temples like this. Next. 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 And this is another case. We are not having water for our conservation work. And even the decoys were also not having enough water. So what they used to do is they used to bring, go to the nearby village and bring water from there. And we also had to get water from the nearby village. And finally we just thought that we will have to look around and we came around this area and from here I mean when we conserved this one we got copious amount of water and we got two more temples from here. Next. See from here we are going to get three temples. One, two, three. And for that we have to cut down the, this tree. Next. The work started. Next. Next. One, two, three. These temples, we are going to get it now. Next. It came up to this level. Next. And now, just look at it. We are going to get, when we open this area. Next. Just see. And the comment of the records were, Man changa hai to katoti me ganga. If your mind is pure, Ganga ji is on your food stuff. Man changa hai to katoti me ganga. Anybody from UP or MP from here? No. Next. 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 Now this work also has been completed. Next. This I saw, I mean, 21 stones like this one. Normally, whenever we used to go for this one, if it is a Shigara temple, there will be more than 21. But this is only 21 piece. So, what is the meaning of that one? Which means, you are not having the Shigara, this would be a kind of Mandaviga temple without a Shigara. Next. We conserved it. The only one addition had to make this one and this two. Otherwise, the entire thing is one full unit. Only we had to keep them together. As per Agapas. Next. Next. And this another huge temple. Next. All the fragments are lying there itself. Including the Amalka. Next. Next. We started doing the work. Next. It has come up to this level. Next. Just see. Three temples, one, two, three. Next. Next. So you had seen it like this one and now it is like this. Next. This is now something very miraculous. You have to look at it very attentively. We said that we are going to get six temples here. 
how? Because the only guiding line was here there are steps, but everything is fallen down here. There was another step here, everything is falling down. Next. So here also you have the steps, which means you are going to get this one. But before that you have to cut down and remove these trees. Next. It was removed. Next. It became like this one. So what we are going to do is, here we will be having six temples. And just behind that one, eight temples. And here again, six temples. So six, six, twelve, twelve plus eight, twenty temples you are going to get. Next. Next. We started the work. Next. Next. So the work, one is almost completed. The work is going on on the second one. Next. Two is almost completed. Next. It's like this now. Next. But I had promised you six temples. Now, just look at it. You had seen it like this one. It is out of that. We have made these two temples. Next. What is the number now? Three. Next. What is it? Four. Next. Five. Next. You have five and half now. Next. Just see. Six temples in a row. I don't know whether you believe in rebirth or not. But now you are forced to believe in the rebirth of the temples. Very beautiful. Very beautiful temples. Each stone that has gone into the creation of this temple. It is very finely, very beautifully conceived and very beautifully executed. And it has been, I mean, each one of them has been, each stone has been, I mean, shaped and, I mean, like a, and cut and polished, like a sparkling diamond. And then that has been integrated into second one, second into third one. And so finally, the whole thing has been completed. It looks almost like a musical composition. Next. Just look at the back side of it. Mean fresh temples. And I mean the important thing was that dacoits were also now changing. Because I mean, they used to come and see every day. Earlier our arrangement was that I mean whenever we do the conservation work, they'll be going outside for dacoity. But now that stage is over. Now they started coming and every day they would be watching, sometimes they would be helping us also. Next. Next. And now just on the back side of it, next, next, next. It is now almost five temples have been completed. Next, next. Now you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now this portion also has to be conserved. Next, 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 next. See in a row. And if you are excavating this portion, you will be getting some more temples here. Next. You had seen it again like this, and it is out of that I mean, what we have done here. Next. These three temples, next. See. Here we are going to get six temples, next. Next. Four. Next. Five. Next. Six. Next. See, it is in a row. You have one terrace, you have got the second terrace, and you have got the third terrace. And if you are excavating this portion, again you are going to get a number of temples here. And similarly, we have been able to conserve 80 temples like this. Next. 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 This I will level. Next. 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 Now, if you see, I mean, this is only two temples, what you see? Next. Out of that, we have been able to get near about eight temples like this. Next. Next. You have seen it like this one, and that has become like this one. This is this one. Next. 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 It's a long, this one, so I'll just cut short. Next. 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 So, next. 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 
in the middle of the forest many of the this decoys they used to take i mean they used to come and sit here so one day i was traveling for going from one temple to another one so in the meanwhile they said that they would like to meet me and have a meeting with me so i was just trying to avoid it because you know you don't know how they are going to behave it finally they understood my predicament one day they said i mean they came in when he came that uh, the head of the decoys nirbhay gujjar he came and sat here he was waiting for me i was moving from one temple to another one and i saw a man smoking so when i saw a man smoking in the temple precincts i lost my uh, this one balance and i asked him are you not ashamed that you are smoking in the temple aapko sharam nahi aate aap mandir mein bidi pi rahe so he looked at me very contemptuously and uh, i did know who he was at that time so all of a sudden my intermediary who came forward caught hold of my hand and told me sir aap se kuch mat kahiye please don't speak anything to him so by that time i was able to understand i mean he would be nirbhay gujjar and i had seen his in- interview also in aitak channel and we just cannot escape now next so we were i mean just considering this temple this because when we look at it if you are an archaeologist and experienced one you would be able to say what you are going to get i knew that i am going to get the boundary wall of the temple here in this debris i excavated it next so if it is temple wall then what is this depression yes very steps so i got the steps also here in this depression so you can just say i mean by just simply looking at the topography you would be able to say next we got the and there wall next and the steps also next 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 so he he was sitting here so i sat at his feet you just cannot escape now then i engaged him in a discussion i said sir yahan ka ye brahma vishnu mahesh jitne bhi hai i mean all of, all those things it is saved only because of you otherwise it would have been in america or in england or in some other country so he liked it very much because you know it is for the first time somebody was appreciating his work otherwise people because he is a tacoit so people normally of course they were against him so somebody for the first time it was he was appreciating the work so i mean he said so when um, he, uh, he asked me hum to aapko kahe ko rok rahe am i going to, am i am i stopping you so i said no you are not stopping us but you know if you are here only the people who are here all around this area only they would be coming for the work but now we want expert workers there and other places so they are not if you are here i mean they would not be come so he asked me what do you want from me i said that we need all kinds of help and cooperation from your side and then i said god has sent you perhaps with a with some kind of purpose so he became curious what is that purpose i said all this monuments all these temples it was built by a dynasty known as gujjar pratihara dynasty this gujjar pratihara dynasty they ruled the country after harsha in 9th and 10th century and partly in 8th century also the gujjar pratihara dynasty was ruling and your name is nirbhay gujjar which means you belong to that great family of kings and i mean you once upon a time you were a prince so that brought about all kinds of changes in him because he never knew it is it was almost like valmiki because valmiki when he came to know about his own ancestral heritage you know then he became a changed man similarly this man also so for the first time he came to know that he belongs to that royal family and his lineage lineage is from that so that brought about all the change in him and then he became a supporter of us, of us. and so what i am going to do is i am just going to remove this one next it was removed next it was replaced like this one and with the help of him we got a number of workers also and they started doing this kind of work ornamental work 
next 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 and by using the same stone next it has been rearranged next 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 you can see this temple is now like this next and this is the garbhagraha portion and this also we are going to provide the roof also for that one next next so i mean the temple pillars are being carved next now you can bring any number of people i mean expert people were they were coming and they were doing the work very beautifully next roof was provided over that one next and now we are raising this portion also next 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 just see a very huge temple very huge temple. and now this has, he has been killed the, the, the narbe gujjar has been shorted by the police because you know he was expecting it and he was shorted by the police but we have given the narbe gujjar name for this temple next and how we have been i mean using all this pillars if it is a broken pillar normally people will discard it but an archaeologist will not discard it he will join them together so like this one and then once you use this some I mean, this kind of the powder of this stone and heraldite and do the matching work you will not be able to distinguish whether it is one piece or two pieces and that is the kind of work we take up next see this is 1 2 3 4 5 5 but once we do the matching work nobody would be able to distinguish whether it is one piece or it is five pieces next next now almost all gods have I been mean, the home place the birth, the place of lord shiva it is in a very good condition his house is now in order shiva and vishnu and all of them were happy with archaeological survey of india and also with mohammed next and now shiva is ready to do ready to engage himself in marriage it is the kalyana sundara murti of lord shiva next so if he has i mean if it even if the marriage takes place then you have to have children and ganesha is in a very dancing mood ekatandam chaturbahu gajavaktram mahodaram siddhi buddhi samayuktam i mean he is one god who has got siddhi and buddhi both moshi garuda mevaja he travels on his moshi he was happy i mean he has got ashtabahu not only chaturbahu ashtabahu next he was i mean he wanted to show it to his wife also so it is shakti ganapati we got a number of sculptures like this one while we were excavating and now we have made a museum out of all these things next and uh, this is yashodara singh the uh, uh, younger sister of uh, rajasthan chief minister she always i mean used to call me for all kinds of work and especially for archaeological work and she was very much interested in all this thing like her illustrious mother so one day she called me and showed me you know mohammed you have been doing a lot of things in my constituency but so far you have not informed me so one day i took her to the place and she was very highly impressed also and she knows about the archaeological conservation source lot of questions and whatever help you want i mean you can take from her also and from his i mean this one from jodhrajya sindhya so then she asked me what do you need from our side so i said that there is no road to this side so if you can make a road that would be very helpful and immediately she ordered and she got it implemented also and then it was my responsibility to see whether the quality of the road is good or not next this is jodhrajit sindhya a very very capable minister very able minister whatever you want you can speak to him you can speak to him directly that is what i used to i mean do and he would do it very very active people next so you had seen the whole temple place almost 2 kilometers of area like this one and now next it's like this next next and now i have given a very beautiful garden also all around very beautiful garden.
And now, because once it, upon a time it was infested and people refused to go, people were afraid of going, but now hundreds and thousands of people are going. Even IAS and IPS people also. In 80s and 90s, even IAS and IPS people also, with their all the police arrangement, they were afraid of going into this place. But when they came to know that now, I mean, one can go, there is nothing, no, nothing to be worried. Now they started going to this area. Next. Next. This is our friend, Narvaguchi. And he knew that one day he would be shot dead. And I said that, I mean, we would be naming this temple after you. Because I mean, it was only because of his help we could do it. Next. One day that happened. Next. Next. And then his younger brother was alive, Papu Gujar. And see, I mean, what he used to do is, I mean, he, I mean, if he is, I mean, if he is kidnapping a school teacher, they would be demanding 15 to 20 lakhs. If it is an engineer, it would be one crore. So similarly, it would go up like that. Next. And once this is gone. What happened is, that is a very sad, sad story. The mining mafia, they came, they started, I mean, because this stone, these are very valuable stone, they came, they started rampant mining. As long as those people, dacoits were there, nobody had the courage to come and do it. But once they are gone, these people, they came, they started <coughs> rampant mining. And my conserved temples, they started coming down. I wrote to forest officer, I wrote to collector, I wrote to SP, I wrote to the minister in charge, who was an RSS man, so I thought that he would be having some love for the monument. His name was Lashmikan Sharma, but he was the biggest beneficiary. Subsequently, he was getting the highest amount of money from those people. I went to him thrice. <coughs> he knew me, so I went to him thrice, I requested him. He told me, Mohammed ji, aapke wo letter nahi mula. I mean, he did not receive my letter. Then I sent a second letter, third letter. Muhammad ji, aapke wo letter nahi mila. But now that man, he is behind the bars, he is in jail. This Lishmi Gan Sharma, that minister, he was the minister of mining also, he was the minister of culture also. He is in, I mean, behind the jail now in the famous Yabam case, in which 43 people have been killed. He is behind the bars. I went to so many people, nobody helped me. So finally I had to do something which a government servant should not do. If job is very dear to him. I wrote a letter, very strong letter to Sudarshan ji, who was the RSS chief at that time in Nath. So I wrote him what Mohammed Ghazni and Mohammed Ori had done during those periods, and that is now happening during your government's period because in Madhya Pradesh it was BJP government. So immediately he took action within 24 hours. Next. 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 See, this was a letter. He took action within 24 hours. Immediately, police was rushed to the area. There was, I mean, fighting between both the group, the police people and also the other group. They tried to, they shot at the collector and SP or something. This is a very powerful group. Shot at the collector, because it was from all the parties, not only from BJP, it was from Congress also, it was from SP also, from almost all the parties. So, there was an engagement between both this one, police as well as the Mining Mafia. Next. Then Ambika Soni, she was the minister in charge of culture. She wrote a letter to Shivarat Singh Chauhan, that is the CM Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, that law and order is the work of the state government. You have to provide all kinds of help and cooperation to Archaeological Survey of India. That was the letter. Next. He wrote back. Chief Minister wrote back. Yes, earlier it was going on, mining was going on, but now we have deputed police and they have completely expelled all those people, but they had a fighting engagement also. But in the last portion of the letter says, he should take action against this officer, that is against me, for writing a letter to Sudarshan ji. That was the last portion of this letter. So I thought that my suspension is now almost decided and I was ready for also. Somehow Ambika Soni did not take action. She rather gave me a kind of promotion. Next. This is 
I mean, almost all the papers, newspapers, all the channels, they were all in my favor, including RSS papers also. They were all favoring me. So, I, I mean, the support of the public support was there, all, all the newspapers also. Next. Now, Bhateshwar ke mandir ko dek chauke afsar. Shandar, excellent. That was the remark of the people who were posted there in 1980. Because in 1980, they refused to go to even senior IAS and IPS officers, they refused to go in to the place because of the, I mean, fear of this decoys. But now they are, I mean, very freely moving around the area. It is some, I mean, it is in 2015. Next. Now see, foreign students from other countries, they have come for the photographical work of this. And not only this one. Next. Holland ke Mahila hockey team ne dekha Bhateshwar ke mandir. The whole team. I mean, now hundreds and thousands of foreigners are going to this place. And these people, they had won the I mean Mahila hockey. Uh, this one in 2012. I mean uh, Olympics. So this was the Olympics team that had gone to the. Area. <coughs> this team. Next. Decoids help preserve Morina temples. Next. Restored glory. It's all newspaper reports. Next. Malveme Manduronga Khazana. In the WDC, you have got the treasury, treasure trove of these temples. Next. Temple safe. CM tells. Chief Minister says that temple is safe, but Mohammed may face heat. Now the action is against me. Turns to RSS, gets help, wanted illegal mining to be stopped near Bhattesha Temples. Next. Illegal miners fire at collector and SP. Such a powerful group as I said. I mean nobody fires at collector and SP. But these people, they were so powerful, they fired at the collector and SP also. Next. Sudarshan Ji ki pahalpar shasan jaga khadane pan. Now, I mean, the mining has been stopped. Bhattesha ke mandir bachaye. Says the temples of Bhattesha. Satsang chala Sudarshan ji ko purata tui paak ne likha patra. Next. Muhammad ne kyo likha Sudarshan ko khat. Why did Muhammad write to Sudarshan ji? Next. CM ne utaya ASI adhishik par sawal. The my way of functioning that was questioned by the chief minister. So the fight was going on between me and the chief minister for a long time. Although he did it, but later on he realized that it was a mistake from his side. Next. Then, of course, the fight was going on, but somehow because of the 2010 Commonwealth was coming in Delhi, I mean, it was, I mean, the programs, the arrangements was going to take place in Delhi. So, I was shifted, I mean, from, transferred from uh, this one, Madhya Pradesh to Delhi. So, I could say myself that way. But another young man who took up the course, he was a young IPS officer. He was crushed to death by this mind mafia. He along with the four police people, they were crushed to death by this mining mafia. I had a providential escape and there was one more thing. He had no support from the decoys. I had a lot of support from the decoys. So they knew that if something happens to me, they would be, this decoys would be completely wiping out their and their family, not only one or two persons. So because of that, you know, I could save myself, but this man could not. A very young man, Gajendra Singh. Next. Beedam Bandhu Behauf Mafia. And because, you know, it is, I mean, that, I mean, it's an area where hundreds and thousands of, you know, I mean, anybody can, I mean, will be having a gun. And so Behauf Mafia, they are not afraid of anybody. So, Eki Saal Me Ho Chukhe, 50 Se Zyada Hamle. Within, I mean, one year, there were more than 50 attacks. So that is the kind of area which you have. Next. Mere bete ki hatya ek sazish. My, the, I mean, the, the killing of my son is a conspiracy. Next. And I got Sark International Award for this work which I had carried out. Next. This is Gulzar Saab, as you know. Next. 
Next. This is a REACH award for the same thing. Next. Later on, the Chief Minister realized he did a mistake. He declared an award. I could not go because the French president was coming to see Kutub Minar, so I had to receive him. So I deputed my wife. She went and received it. Next. This is not part of this one. This is slum school because, you know, while I was there in Delhi, I had a number of monuments. And uh, for this conservation of the monument, people had come to different parts of India. They had come along with the children. So, I mean, they were mainly going for begging. So, what I did is, I started some schools for these children. And the children used to come for the schools. They used to attend it. Next. So, one school, I mean, you just give them. Because, you know, they have nothing. But you can provide them a lot of things. Because, you know, once, I mean, after, after this one, I mean, once your education is complete, you would be in very good position. Whatever position you have, you can add so many things to it. And you can change the life of the people, what Amma is doing here. Similar work, you know, we can also do it in our own little way. So, I have been doing that kind of work in Delhi and in many other places also. Next. I mean, these are all children. This is an open school. You have to teach them only Hindi, English and Mathematics. That is what I have been doing. Just appoint a teacher also for that. Next. Next. This is in, uh, this one, Tuglakabad. Their parents are working here. And here, you know, they would be learning Hindi, English and Mathematics. <laughs> Next. Give them, I mean, small, I mean, toys and equipments like this one. It will change their life. Next. And some of the, I mean, people who, around Delhi, they also started cooperating with me. Next. 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 See, these people, for months and months together, they might not have taken a bath. But you have to teach them how to take a bath and how to be regular in all those things. Next. 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 My wife, I mean, she was, I mean, taking the financial aspect of it. I mean, she used to control it. Next. And during the, this one, with this one, I mean, during the winter season, you have to provide them gumballs and other things also. Next. It was opposed by a number of higher officials. But I said that I am spending money out of my own pocket. So why do you want to stop it? So they had no answer for it. Next. Next. Various morning. Next. 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 This is near Kutub Minar. Next. And then people came. Their parents came. They said our children are now completely okay. But we also wanted to learn. But for them, they had time only during the evening time. And evening time, they had to prepare food also. So I said that we will give you, I mean, food during the evening time and then we started distributing food also for them. And see how they are coming. Next. Next. See, they have children of two years, three years. They have already learned Hindi now and started learning English also. Next. It's only, it's all from Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and other parts. Next. 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 A number of foreigners also started helping us. Next. 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 This is when uh, IBN, CNN and IBN saw it. They gave me a Citizen Journalist Award. Next. And it was given by... <laughs> Next. But he was 6.2 and I was 5. I am 5.2. <laughs> but somebody who is taller than him saw this one. And he also said that we will have to do the kind of work, you know, this way. And can you just guess his name? 
No. Yes, next. Please meet him. Next. Next. See the way he is meeting the children. The same children he is meeting here. And the way he is sitting. Because you know, he had a love for the Indian philosophy. And especially for Upanishad. Sarve Bhavantu Suginam, Sarve Santu Nirame. Sarve Badranavan, he was a man of that kind. Because I knew before I mean coming that I mean he is that kind of person. But I never knew that he would be requesting this, making this kind of extraordinary request. Certain people, they wanted to stop it in the government ministry. But then he said, no, I would like to meet. Next. Next. And he had got special gifts also from White House. Normally, I mean, an American president, when he gave me a gift, he would be giving it to a protocol and he would give me. And when I gave a gift, you know, that was again to the protocol. But in this case, for the children, he gave it his own. I mean, he brought it from White House and then he distributed it with his own hand. That is the greatness of the people sometimes. Next. 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 And then, that was in 2010. He came again in 2015. At that time, I received a phone call from American Embassy that he would like to meet one child known as Vishal. He remembered because there was one boy who had just gone and received him, welcome Mr. Obama, from that school group. He remembered the boy. And then I had forgotten Vishal. You know, I had hundreds of students like this one. So I had forgotten his name. I said, sir, it's not possible. I mean, uh, not to him, to the uh, this one, uh, embassy. It's not possible because they have neither this one email nor mobile. So how can we locate them? But they said, no, no, you can locate it, but you please do it. So they gave me three days. Within that three days, I knew his father. So I was able to locate him. And then finally, he, that boy is here. Meeting Michelle and Obama. So Obama is on the other side. Next. So this is the way how we can, you know, change the society. So when you go from here, because it is such a great institution, the great Vidya appeared under Amma. So this is such a great institution. We, are, we have come here not only to learn, but also to change the society and especially the lesser, the privileged, unprivileged groups. If we are not I mean, doing this kind of thing, you know, for the unprivileged group, then there is no meaning in our own life itself, you know. There is no point in living. So that is the great message this great institution is giving. And I am really happy that I am a part of it now in a very smaller way. And I am really grateful to the teachers, the Gurujana and other people also for giving an opportunity like this to speak to you. And so that, you know, whatever I mean, I mean we have that we can share with each other. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wisdom and for your valuable experience. With eminent and wise men like you, sir, on stage, the audience always craves for interaction. May we now invite the audience to participate in a short Q&A session with KK Mohammed, sir. Those who wish to participate may stand up and raise their hands one by one. Uh, sir, KK Mohammed, it's a uh, great opportunity to, to uh, interact with you. I have uh, only one question. Uh, so more, many of us uh, in the current society, we do not want to look back into the past or uh, we do not want to, you know, know our past. So my question is, why conserve our ancient monuments? What can they teach us about ourselves? And what is the uh, impact they hold for us in this current society. Thank you, sir. And nowadays we are constructing new buildings. What is the life of this building? What is the life of cement? It is 60, 65 years. And what about our monument, ancient monuments? We have the Ashogan pillar even now standing almost 2,300 years. What was the kind of technology which they had used? 
So we, it is a great, I mean, opportunity for us to learn about the technology, the techniques, and also about I mean, the, I mean, the structure itself. Because each structure that speaks about the social, cultural, economic condition of that particular age. So it is a milestone. Look at uh, the great Egyptian pyramid. The height is 480 feet. And each stone which they have used in that one, it is sometimes 10 ton or sometimes 20 ton also. Look at our Bhradishara temple. The height is 200 feet. And the top stone which is there, that is weighing 80 tons. And what is the weight which I mean, a truck can I mean, take it? It is mostly 12 ton. And sometimes it will be 15 ton also. But how could they raise in Bhradishara temple 80 tons of stone to a height of 200 feet? These are certain technological questions. So for, in order to learn all these things, in order to understand all these things, you have to conserve and preserve our own ancient monuments, like Pradeshwara, like our Kutub Minar. The height of Kutub Minar is 238, Taj Mahal is 243. And look at that, uh, this one, is a great pyramid, it is 480 feet. So this gives you not only about our technology, but also about our social condition, economic condition, cultural condition, social condition. So it's a great storage of books, the great storage of knowledge. That is exactly the reason why we are conserving this monument, and especially the World Heritage Monument. Thank you. Namishwa Muhammad Ji. Yes. Uh, when I was seeing through the pictures, they were like, uh, before reconstructing it, they were all scattered. Mm -hmm. So you must be really a good puzzle solver to pick, the, uh, pick them and put them together. So uh, they are so much scattered. How did you like solve them? Which piece goes into where? For us, it's like uh, uh, when we solve small, small, small puzzles, we get irritated and we just drop those things. What is that thing which motivates you to go on uh, doing this very difficult task of bringing different pieces together? See, I mean, uh, number one, you have few standing tables there. That is a model for you. And then for an archaeologist, you know, there are certain ancient Indian, uh, this one, text. Those texts, you know, that would tell you what was the condition, what, how the temples were looking earlier. For example, there is one, I mean, if it is of 4th century AD, we have a text known as Manasara. So this Manasara will tell you different types of temples. And then if it is from 9th and 10th centuries, it is based on Maya Mata. Like we have got in Kerala, Tantra Samuchayam is there. Manushyala Chandriga is there. There are many, many things. So similarly in North India it was Manasara and then Mayamada and then they had a number of women. If it goes to from 11th and 12th century, they have different texts. So we look at the monument, I mean which year you know, it belongs to or which century it belongs to. It is on the basis of that, you know, we determine things and then you have to have certain the puzzle questions also which you have rightly said. You have to see it, I mean, a lot, lot of this one, error and uh, this one mistakes would be there and then you learn it, I mean, out of that one. So it is not necessary that an expert should be there always. An expert should be there in the beginning, but then, you know, your own labor, they become very good experts. That was the technique which we have been using. Mr. sir. So myself, Gautam Asnar. Sir, actually, uh, I was late for your presentation. I didn't know that something like this was going on here and I consider myself fortunate to have listened at least a part of it. So my question is, like, uh, all of us, we are very well aware that our country possesses such great cultural heritage and stuff like that. But people seldom realize the value of it and people seldom bother about it. So, uh, in what way can the present generation be molded mentally so that they realize the value of it and do something to preserve and 
conserve the culture and bring it to the limelight to of the society what can be done that's my question it's very important question you know because what i have been doing because we have to create this kind of awareness among the students what is our culture what was the importance of our culture and how our culture is different from other cultures and what is the importance of all this monument how it should be conserved because if you go to any of this monument you will be finding the name of some boy and some girl also so how to stop it so what i have been doing is in northern delhi because you know i was working in bihar i was working in madhya pradesh and many other places so there i will be i used to bring the students to the monument and they take an oath that they would not scribble on the monument they would not i mean uh, this one i mean uh, paint on the monument so they used to take this kind of oath that is number 1 number 2 you have to have the classes and courses also for that one for that our own education ministry our own ministry of culture they should come forward they don't give importance to culture and ministry whichever the ministry comes whether it is congress government or bjp government if somebody is say that congress ministry was better i mean this one i mean this one it was not doing well i am not going to accept it <coughs> because we, i have seen the working of this ministry also <coughs> none of them give that kind of importance which they should have given they would be speaking about the great culture the great civilization and everything but when it comes to practice they don't do the kind of work which is expected from them that is the biggest problem so i myself abirami and uh, what i would like to ask you is like um, today like we we live in a scenario where uh, we have certain conflicts regarding to religion so uh, and you are being a, you being a muslim uh, you did a, you have done a lot of things uh, for the cultural heritage and all those things here uh, building up regaining uh, the temples back uh, which is something indeed really great and in a present scenario like uh, we have it today we have a, a lot of conflicts over religion right so what i would like to ask you is what message have we got to uh give us regarding the uh, conflicts we make in religion i mean the ones we uh, make in the present scenario because you, you have proved a lot of things so i would like to ask you that. see you. the type of work amma is doing here and all over the world because you know when i i saw a group of because uh, recently there was a program of amma in calicut and i was there swami ji was there and as i saw the people you know it were they were not i mean hindus only i mean coming from various countries mostly it might be christians and other things so these kind of i mean people i mean they are the great saints and servants of the modern era they can work out a i mean i mean a, a great solution for all this all this kinds of problem which is now affecting the uh, body politics of india or the communal politics of india or the religious politics of india only such great leaders can come forward and only they would be able to unite the entire country into one single harmonious whole so that is what is expected you know because i am also here because of that message now it's not i mean we have nothing to do but i mean if we follow amma's path the ways and programs of amma that is a great way i mean how to unite the entire country into one single group because you know why should be because you know if i am a muslim it's not my mistake it's god's mistake if you are a hindu it's not your mistake it's god's mistake and if i had an offer, i mean this one uh, option i would not have been i would not have like to be born in india i would have like to be born in america or in switzerland and you also that is the thing so similarly i mean we have to see our own problems also our own limitations also and with i mean basing uh, everything within our own limitations you know we will have to work together and we will have to create a new very powerful india and for that i mean messengers saying servants like amma and many other people i am not not only really limited to amma and many there are many other people also we will have to follow their path the nodi india can be a very strong country any more questions
Muziris, I am not, because I am not very familiar with Kerala. I am here in Kerala now since the last, although in Kerala, I am here since the last three months only. Otherwise, you know, I am not very familiar about the excavations of it. But whatever MGS sir and other people say, he says it's a good site, but it's not the real Muziris. That is what he says. Because if it is a Muziris, you have to get the bazaar. You have to get that, uh, the, uh, uh, this one. People, the place where people were living. Because you know, we have been able to excavate a number of places where we have, for example, Kaveri Pumatinam and many other classical sites. So with, there you have got shop, there you have got bazaar, there you have got, uh, for example, our Harappa, Mohanjadara and all these places. That kind of things you are not getting here. You are getting only artifacts and pottery pieces. Which means it might have been a center, but whether it was Muziris or not, that is a big question. And the second thing is the man who is in charge of it. He should be a qualified archaeologist. And this man, Mr. Cheri, uh, Dr. Cherian, I think he was not a qualified archaeologist for that. So it was a, on a party agenda they have been excavating. That is the biggest problem. People without knowledge of their past, origin and culture are like trees with no roots. On this occasion, Amrita Darshanam, International Center for Spatial Studies, would like to invite you all to Utkal Darshan, a six-day culture and heritage tour to Bhuvanesha, Puri and Konak. We now invite Brahmachari Prashant, Assistant Professor Amrita Darshanam, to honor our chief guest with Ponada and to present to him our special memento and crafted at our own Amrita Silpaka Lakshetra as a token of our heartfelt gratitude. The memento is a Ganapati representative of the many ancient Ganapati sculptures Pamadza has said. Finally, may we invite Pramajari Shivantan, Faculty Advisor Ayat Amritapuri and Assistant Professor Amrita Darshanam to give the vote of thanks. Namaskaraya. Mohammed sir started his presentation with a slide. Do you remember what was the first slide? What was it? The first, very first slide, slide was about Red Fort. So the very first image of the red fort evokes a various a mixture of emotions in all Indians. Say tricolor, patriotism, Independence Day, then flag hosting, etc. But did you know the original color of red fort was not red? Any guess what was the original color? It was actually white. Actually most part of the red fort was white. I think somebody correctly said. Yes, Nakul, Nakul. Huh? So, the original white was a, created from a mixture of marble pieces, then dal, then egg white, lime. All these were grounded together and then mixed a plastic, and then they were using it for plastering the walls. However, during our first war of independence, the red fort was captured by British troops, and from there onwards, it was under their control. And they used the shortcuts, time saving and money saving exercise for polishing and painting. So they took it as an easy way and they uh, covered it with red. So I feel that Mama sir, when he took uh, in 2011, uh, I think in 2011 he was in charge of Delhi Circle of Archaeological Survey of India. So he was a superintendent. From then onwards, he started a series of scientific conservation studies of red fort and identified its original color and i think out of five major buildings inside red fort two i think bathhouse and drum house has been uh, repainted into traditional white mughal color so i hope that red fort the proverbial seat of our india's power has been converted and it, it 
required almost 150 year and the able leadership of Sri K.K. Mohammed sir to reclaim its original white color. So, similarly, I hope that K.K. Mohammed sir will continue reclaim the original texture and color of our history from the many red colors occupied by current historians. Then, the talk was very, very enlightening. So I was expecting only Bhateshwar Temple Complex story, but then he explained about the Islam schools and the other humanitarian aspects of archaeologists. So a big thank you, sir. Thank you from Amrita Darshanam International Center and Ayut Amrithaviri for coming to this place and giving a wonderful talk. Uh, talk. Also, I thank our campus director, Brahmajari Sudipji. He is also a mentor for our Amrita Darshanam and our associate dean, our, our principals, and other staff and faculty who has helped us to conduct this program. A big thank you for all Ayit Amrathavari student volunteers who helped us to coordinate this event. And then the other uh, departments like ICTS, GAD, Carpool, Guest Room members who all played a very big role in coordinating this, coordinating and running this event. Kindly excuse me if I missed any of the um, major people who was involved in this. Once again, thanking each and every one of you from Amrita Darshanam and Aida Amrita Viri for successfully completing this event. Thank you, Om Amrita Shri.